So this world fans, welcome back to Trash Talk. But with me, Rocky Padilla, and today we have a special guest from Thailand and Westchester Knicks last season, Trey Holder. Trey, thank you so much, man, for uh, sharing your time with me and coming to the show. Of course. Thanks for having me. First, congratulations, winning gold medal, 3x3, and then bronze medal for 5-on-5. Hey, man, how proud are you, man, to be able to rep- represent Thailand in the SEA Games? Um, I'm very proud. Um... I mean, it was always a dream of mine to play for a country, some something bigger than me, and uh, especially to play for my mom's, um, you know, motherland. So uh, I'm just proud that we were able to bring a gold medal and bring a medal for the 5x5, and um, I look forward to the rest of the SEA Games in the future. And how did this opportunity come about? How did Thailand find you in the States? <laughs> <laughs> um, I actually have a friend named Tyler Lamb. He played in the Sea Games before. He's actually the uh, same ethnicity as me, black and Thai. And uh, I'm familiar with Tyler because he's from LA, played at UCLA. We both played in the Pac 12. And I honestly don't know how he knew I was Thai. Maybe Instagram, he seen my mom and kind of guessed. But uh, yeah, he asked me what I'd be interested in. Uh, you know, at first I was a little hesitant because I was kind of worried about my path and trying to get to the NBA or whatever. But then I was like, why not? I don't have anything to do. And, uh, you know, I couldn't, you know, wait to get out here and, you know, represent the country. Man, that's the only thing I wish for, though. I wish we could see you and Tyler play together at the SEA Games, man. <laughs> no, that would be that would be a good uh, combination. Um I don't know. I haven't really talked to him about it. I know he was going to initially play this year, but he had uh, to go to Taiwan. So I don't know. I mean, I think if uh, we play together, I think it would be a you know a good duo. Should we expect this in the future? Look, I'm not making any promises, but I feel <laughs> like I feel like we were so close, and uh, if our schedules align, I think you know it's something that both of us would want to do. Obviously, now you've been in. Thailand probably like about for a month probably or more than a month and just want to know your impression for Thailand basketball. Uh, well, first of all, the country is beautiful. Like mm-hmm. I know the people are amazing, but um, the basketball. I mean, the team welcomed me with open arms, and uh, you know, after we lost, you know, I I messaged them and I was like, just thank you for like, you know, inviting me and um. And letting me be myself and letting me play my game because you know, you know, I'm coming over here from America. Like you know, these guys have been working hard. You know, I think they were training when I was in my G League season. So like, for them to just say, "Here you go, Trey. You know, help us. You know, try to get a medal." You know, I was just very honored and proud to you know, you know, be on the same court with them and you know, represent the country. How do you like it though in Thailand? You know, you good with the foods and everything. Uh, you like it. Oh, I love spicy food. Thai, <laughs> Thai food is my favorite food. So, um, you know, I'm right at home here, and the food is so much better than in America. Thai, the Thai. Oh, LA. I, right. I know LA got a lot of good Thai food as well, man. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> it's good. Good as here. You can go anywhere here and find something delicious. And how was your overall uh, Sea Games experience, though? It was amazing. Uh, you know, I had a couple of friends like uh, Christian Juzang played for Vietnam. We're actually in the same friend circle. Like when I go back home, we're going to celebrate his birthday. Like so just to experience something like that, one of my friends and, you know, I built relationships with the fr- my fr- uh, teammates in, from Thailand and just meeting new people in different countries. It's just an amazing experience. Um, it's actually a better experience than I thought I was going to you know, have. So, you know, I'm looking forward to the upcoming years for sure. Did you get a chance to watch the other events? I watched the women's teams. I watched a little bit of the volleyball. Okay. Um, I wanted to watch the Thailand versus Vietnam soccer, soccer. game, but I think they were playing right when we we're playing. Oh. Um, but I was keeping up with the medals. Like there's Twitter's, websites where you could find 
who was leading and stuff like that. But I couldn't really watch as much as I wanted to because I was so, you know, focused on the art, our season. But I mean, uh, the schedule is kind of crazy. <laughs> they almost play like yeah. what, five, almost five days in a row or something like that. Uh, we play, I mean, six games in seven days. Wow. And, you know, everyone's schedule is a little different. So, like, when we played you guys, we mm -hmm. had a, we had a 3 p.m. game and then played 11 a.m. the next morning. So, <laughs> like, you know, Vietnam had, I think they had the best because they play at 7 p.m. every day. So, like, it kind of worked. I don't know. I, <laughs> I feel I feel like the, the semifinal – final bracket is the best because you'll get the best from most teams because mm -hmm. kind of hard because every game is so valuable when it's six games in seven days because there's no bracket mm -hmm. and you played 3x3 was that your first experience playing 3x3 it was and we definitely had trials and tribulations because i think we started one and two we lost mm -hmm. buzzer beater vietnam then we lost to the philippines And we really did, we really didn't know what we were. I mean, we kind of did, but we it's nothing like playing. And all the other teams played it, you know, previous games and stuff like that. So we had to learn on the fly, um, and and it worked out. Was it harder for you to adjust because the rules is different, the ball is different? Um, it was more so the pace of the game that. Oh that I had to adjust to because usually when I'm the point guard, if someone shoots, I go back on defense. Or if I shoot, you know, sometimes I go back on defense. But when you shoot, no matter if you make it or miss, you have to get back on defense immediately or they'll kick it out making three or something like that. Um, but interestingly, my biggest adjustment was playing 3x3 then to 5x5 five five because, oh. yeah, because when I was playing 3x3, it was mostly like one-on-one. -on -one. Well, for our team, I don't know about other teams, but so then when I got to five on five, I feel like I had to adjust to playing five on five basketball again. Like, you know, sometimes I felt like I was too much, too playing too much isolation. And, you know, I think as time progressed, we play more games. I got more comfortable with playing five on five again. I don't know if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, I think it makes sense. Does it, do you have like a different mindset though, playing 3x3 and playing five on five? Um, I just, personally, I just felt like no one could stop me one-on-one, -on -one, not mm -hmm. in the air. Game. Like, it's, you can't really help because you don't want to give up a two. And twos are really important because the game is so fast and so quick. So I felt like if I was able to create a mismatch and go by my defender, it would make things easier for not only myself, for the two, but for my teammates, because eventually if I keep scoring once, they're going to help. And uh, I think, you know, after I had a good first game, uh, it made things easier for everyone else because they were so focused on me. It's so hard, though, to stop you, man. You draw 41 on us. <laughs> but you guys, have a you guys have a very close game against Philippines and against Indonesia, but you guys fell short. But what lesson can you learn from those two games um what lesson i think the philippines mm -hmm. i think we put too much pressure on ourselves we knew what was at stake we knew you know how good they've been over the years and we just wanted to beat them so bad and i think as you can if you saw the box score myself mm -hmm. moses and freddie you know the You know, we kind of we're kind of close, and we all talked about like being the first team to beat them in 30 years or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. I think we didn't play as well as we wanted to because we put so much pressure on ourselves, and we felt like I'm sorry, no disrespect to anyone else, but we felt like if we didn't beat them, it was going to be hard to get a gold medal because we didn't, you know, we didn't know if Marquise was playing, we didn't know how good Derek was. So, um, yeah, so it was just. You know, we put too much pressure on ourselves. And in each game, I don't know. I don't know. I think we started too slow. You guys went up 12 early, and you guys gained confidence, and you guys, you know, play well, and you guys deserve to win. So I give credit to you guys, and I'm happy for you guys that you guys want to go medal. Talking about Derek, you played in the NBA G League. 
Uh, do you think Derek could get to that level? And how impressed are you with Derek? He's still 19. Like I'm very surprised too. <laughs> yeah. No, actually, man, he has a chance. I think hmm. if he gets under the right system, um, he could be really good because you could tell he's still raw. He's still young. And but what impressed me more than anything was how well he was shooting and his shot. It doesn't look like he just had a couple lucky days or something like that. Like you could tell he has a nice form. And uh, I know he's going to Grand Canyon, but I mm -hmm. wish he was going to ASU because my coaching staff there, I know they would develop him and let him play his game and he would really take off. But regardless of where he plays, I think he is, if he has the right mindset and he seems like a good young kid. So, you know, I follow him on Instagram and stuff like that. So I think he has a chance. I think, I think he has a chance. Oh, and he's man. Like yeah. I'm probably still growing. Yeah. No, for sure. He has a chance. He, It's going to be good. Really good. Man, we are excited to hear that from you, man. But, Trey, what is next, though, after this for you, man? Um, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I really don't know. I kind of try to take it day by day. Mm -hmm. um, right now, I'm enjoying Thailand with my family. You know, I when I first came out here, I just said it. I wanted to win a gold medal. I wanted to win, too, but mm -hmm. one for the first in history is – It's solid. So, you know, I'm happy that, you know, I was able to make an impact and my team was able to make an impact for this country. And I don't really know what's next. And like I said, I'm trying to play summer league and then go from there. If I, I don't know, I really don't know. How's the chance looking li like though, playing in the summer league? I think it looks good. Um, mm -hmm. I had a pretty good season in the G league at first. Um, my first team, I didn't really play as much as I wanted to, but when the second team, I really, I was starting and uh, I played a lot and I felt like I had a good impact on the team. So I think if uh, the right team or looks at my stats and look at the games that they can see that I'm, you know, capable of playing at that level. So, and I think it looks good. It's just a matter of um, timing, you know, the draft and stuff like that. So we'll see what happens. I mean, like you're dropping 20 points, bro. With yeah. in G League, how hard is it to yeah. get a spot, man? <laughs> no, for sure. I mean, yeah, I think the only problem with me is I'm a little bit older for the summer league, mm -hmm. so I don't know like how it goes. But there's other people that's been older and played in the summer league, so I think I, I think I'll be be there. Yeah, so man, if I'm we there, we definitely do another little podcast. Hey, we need to, man. We gotta do it in Vegas, man. <laughs> But Trey, are you a Laker fan? <laughs> You're from LA. My mom would hate me. So I was, I was actually a Clipper fan growing up. But I'm more right now. I'm more of a, I'm more of a LeBron fan. Like, okay. I don't know. I don't really have teams that have favorite players. So mm -hmm. I've kind of been going for wherever team LeBron's on because. And I just want to witness someone that's uh, considered the greatest. So that's my main thing. Uh, but my favorite player to watch is Kyrie. So I could yeah, see you play like Kyrie, but I'm a Clipper fan. I would like what to say. I've, I've been a Clipper fan since 2003. If you know Quentin Richardson, Darius Smile Days, yep. that's me. Yep. <laughs> okay. Baron Davis. Yeah. Um, what was it? Um, I mean, like, Elton. Yeah, we had Elton Brand, Lamar Odom, everybody. It was popping yeah. back then. No, yeah, yeah, okay. So you're you're a true Clipper fan. I I am. So I thought you were a Laker fan. So I want to ask you, like, if you want to keep I would, wrestle no, Westbrook I, I, or not next I, season. I was rooting for the Lakers, but it was only because of LeBron. It wasn't because of uh, I'm like a true Laker fan. <laughs> so don't judge. So you were. So you were a Cavaliers fan as well, then? Cavaliers, Miami, Lakers, and especially when they had, he... especially when they had Kyrie and LeBron together. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. That was that was you know Kyrie is my favorite player. So if you have Kyrie and LeBron, it's just perfect. And now, hopefully, Kyrie gonna play full season though. Hopefully, he's not gonna be a part time player again next season. I actually saw this morning uh, oh. an edit with Kyrie in a Clipper jersey. I don't know how true that is, but I know you will be a happy camper if that happens. Man, I'll be so happy. <laughs> All right, Trey, we're going to uh, answer a couple of questions from my followers. Um, so first is from Posma Ferdinand. He is asking, are you going to be a regular 
in the net and the Thai national team? Uh, I mean, I, I don't want to say I'm going to be a regular because I don't know who my future hope is in America. But if I'm available and I'm healthy, for sure, 100%. All right, for sure. Next one, Audi Bagusaputra. Do you know about Thailand basketball before you decide to join the, uh, the Thai national team? Um, uh, not really, to be honest. I didn't really, I'm not going to lie and say I kept up with it. I mean, I knew the results from the 2019 and 2017 Sea Games. But, uh, you know, it was most, more so about representing something like representing the country. It wasn't about the history or anything about for me. It was play for, the, for Thailand and play for my mom and trying to do something that's never been done. Oh, your mom must be really happy, though. Yes, she has my medals. I don't have my medals. <laughs> <laughs> She's keeping the medal. All right, next one from Galing Wijaya. Uh, can you speak Thai? <laughs> uh, no, I cannot speak Thai, but I'm actually learning right now. Mm -hmm. I have a the trainer from the Thailand team. She sends me, like, words and phrases, so I'm learning. Uh, let, me, let, let me hear one, man. Let me hear one. Uh okay, Sabade Mai means how are you doing? Oh, that's not good. I only know Sabade Kab. Yeah, that's uh, what is that? Hi, Hi yeah. <laughs> Basics, but I'm still learning. Uh, that's good. Hey. That's a start. All right, next one from Rafi Padantias. Why do you so shifty, bro? <laughs> Nobody can guard you in the sea games. What's the secret? Um. I don't know. I actually, you know, some of the things that I do, people ask me, like, how you do? I'm like, do you practice? And sometimes I, I mean, I work out, but I really don't practice some of the things I do. It was more so like, I just watch, I, I watch a lot of basketball. I watch a lot of YouTube. Um, and I think, you know, if you see something, you can imitate it. If you, I don't know, I personally think so, because Kyrie, like you said, is my favorite player. And sometimes I do, I'm not saying I play like him or I'm anywhere as good as him, but I'm just saying like sometimes there's moves that he he does that I end up doing based because I watch, not that I go work out. So I would just say um, I got shifty off of just being a true fan of basketball and watching, and then, you know, it just happens. All right. That's a wrap for us, <laughs> Trey. <laughs> Once again, thank you so much, man, you know, for sharing your time with us, talking to us talking to the Indonesian basketball fans and hopefully the Southeast Asian fans as well. Trey, hopefully to see you in Vegas or LA. I'll be there. <laughs> Sounds good. Thank you and congrats you guys on your medal. Yeah, man. Uh, thank you so much. We appreciate you. And once again, everybody, don't forget to follow Trey Holder. Trey, give me your Instagram handle. Uh, Trey Holder 2. Um, T-R-A-H-O-L-D-E-R and the yeah. number 2. Yes, sir. So everybody, don't forget to always follow Trey as well. And thank you so much, guys, for watching. And we'll see you guys again on the next video. Peace out, guys. Peace.